we're excited that you're here on the call to get great information from our panel experts, but we're reminding you to wear your masks when you're out in public to protect yourself, but also to protect others in case you're sick. And if you're dealing with elderly or children or anyone that is susceptible with a low immune system, you wanna be prepared to not spread anything. And so we're thrilled to have these. My mom made mine and uh, she did a good job, but somehow I've got to get it tighter. So we'll, we'll talk about that later, but um, just making you have a visual this morning and all of our panel experts have their masks on as well. So they are prepared for anything. And I will take that off. Absolutely. Yes, prepared and ready, ready for the challenge. Well, good morning. My name is Wendy Gaylor. For those of you who may not know me, um, I'm the president and CEO of the Bedford Area Chamber of Commerce, and we are here to support your business. We're excited and thrilled that you're here to learn more about how we can help you grow and thrive in the middle of crisis and come out of emergency mode into recovery mode. And we're all moving towards that and hopeful for the future and thankful for every single day that we're able to serve you and to serve our community. And that's what we're here for. We really are. And we want to make sure that you're equipped with all that you need, including masks and the information that you're going to need to go forward and be successful in this climate right now. We know that there are better days ahead. We're sure of that. And remember to be thankful. That's going to be my tip for the day is just learning to be thankful in the midst of it all and know that better days are ahead. And think of at least, you know, three, four, five things every single day when you first wake up about what you're thankful for. It might just be having a roof over your head and being able to have food in the cupboards and you know, know that your needs, your essential needs are taken care of, but those are things that we are thankful for. And we are a blessed uh, nation and uh, we continue to pray for our state and our county and our town because we know that we've got great leaders and we're excited to have um, some of those on the call for answering questions and for our panel leaders. Um, thank you again for your time and your support today. You're gonna to bring such good information that's imperative for our businesses to make sure that they're doing all that they can. I do wanna mention that there is a loan uh, that has just been uh, launched and it is through US Chamber. And um, we are look, it's a $5,000 loan. It came out in our newsletter today. So if you get our Friday newsletters, you can look it up. And it is to help small businesses that have been affected by COVID-19. So uh, please look up the website and look for that information to come out to you. I know that the PPP is saying that that's out of money. So you want to look for other avenues right now to support your business. Um, so with that, uh, further ado, I want to announce our team. We have Scott McCarthy, our fearless leader with Stylewise Partners, who brings it every week, and we're excited to have him back. And he is going to let us know um, who we have on the call today and what we can look forward to. Excellent. Thank you, Wendy, and thank you to everyone for joining again. It's good to uh, good to have such a large group joining in for the Zoom meeting today. So for our lineup today, we have our friend Christy Lucy back from Centra Health who will kick things off with a COVID-19 update from our healthcare perspective, um, followed right uh, behind, um, which I think is, I've been looking forward to this all week actually, uh, Jennifer smith Ramey from Horizon Behavioral Health is gonna be talking about um, COVID-19 and the mental health issues and the challenges, as well as what we can do to, to help ourselves with our mental health, so awesome. And uh, just a little, foreshadowing there. Jennifer, I did make my bed this morning and I feel great. So thank you very much. All right. Uh, we will also get a chance to talk with Chief uh, Jack Jones of the Bedford County Department of Fire and Rescue, talking about some of the uh, current efforts from the county services that are being uh, provided. And then we will uh, get a chance to learn a little bit more about technology and how we can come together with the use of technology with Craig Zukowski, and he's with Fifth Order Technologies. Uh, so thank you, Craig, for helping us uh, there. And um, 
you know, I reached out to you earlier this week for the Zoom problem and you helped me out. Uh, we had challenges this morning even signing in and you solved those with us. So awesome and looking forward to a, a great morning. It's a pleasure to be here to be speaking with you all today to share a little bit of information about um, COVID-19 and how that has affected our collective mental health. And I, of course, work in the mental health field, and we do know that our clients that we work with that have mental health and substance use disorders are at increased risk of having those, um, their anxiety, their depression exacerbated as a result of COVID. However, we also know that beyond individuals with pre-existing disorders, our general population, which includes all of us on the call today, are at higher risk. Um, recently, a study that was conducted back in March um, outlined that about 45% of Americans note an increase in anxiety and depression as a result of COVID, with about 19% of Americans saying that it has significantly impacted their mental health. So what I'd like to do is just run through a couple of research-based tips and strategies that we can all do to help maintain our stress levels during this time. Um, first and foremost, we really recommend that we all get our news from very credible sources, such as the Center for Disease Control, the World Health Organization, that we really turn to those credible sources for information. And along those same lines, that we really are mindful of how much we're consuming in terms of the news. And that's a balance. Of course, we want to stay informed on the latest information <coughs> about the virus, but we don't want to be overly consumed with watching the news 24 seven with news cycles. So we wanna set limits. Um, and in addition to setting those limits, and, and Scott um, highlighted this a few minutes ago, we really want to be sure that we're following our daily routines as much as possible while giving ourselves some grace. So that can include things like when you get up in the morning, making sure that you make your bed, that you go down and have breakfast, that you're following those um, hygiene practices and grooming practices, that we stay in as much of a normal routine as we can. Um, that includes connecting with our loved ones and significant others, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Along those same lines, we really recommend, and this is evidenced by the research, that, that we all try to move as much as we can every single day. So for some of us, that might be more intensive cardiovascular exercise. I see people in my neighborhood that are out walking and running up and down the street. But that also may mean just doing some stretching at home, some yoga. So it can be a variety of exercise. And again, the research does support the use of exercise to really help manage or mitigate the stress that we're feeling. Some other practices to help with our stress level is something called mindfulness. And we use this a lot in our practice, in our counseling practice with our clients. And mindfulness is just a way of practicing awareness in the moment. And that really involves blocking out intrusive thoughts and feelings and focusing on our present moment and accepting it without judgment. Meditation can be another effective tool in managing stress. And that is very similar to mindfulness. It involves being in a quiet, comfortable place where you can really observe your thoughts. And again, without that judgment. Um, there are some free apps that we like to use with our clients and ourselves um, that can be uh, made available called Headspace is one and then the Calm app. So I really encourage you to look into those type of apps 
a meditation can be as simple as five minutes a day. So it doesn't have to be something um, that lasts for hours. Some other meaningful things that you all can do and we can do are things like reading a book, listening to music, um, learning a new skill. So just this week, we had a, a client that we were working with through telehealth doing a session who said, hey, I have a ukulele that somebody gave me years ago. I'd really like to learn how to play this ukulele. So the client and her therapist were able to go onto YouTube and find some tutorials about learning how to play a ukulele. So thinking really outside the box on activities and things that you can do while we're practicing mitigation strategies. Um, and, and staying connected with others as well is so important. I briefly highlighted that earlier, but the importance of staying connected through email, through text, through video chats. I know on my Facebook page, I see lots of folks connecting through Zoom calls that can be friend group connecting and families connecting. We really emphasize the importance of staying connected with others and also setting your own limits and boundaries too. So if you find that talking about the virus and COVID-19 is increasing your anxiety and stress, it's okay to tell other people, hey, I get that this is something you wanna talk about right now. Right now for me, I need to focus on doing some other activities. Why don't we go play a game of online Yahtzee? So it's okay to set those boundaries with your friends and loved ones. Um, finally, I'd like to, to end with just letting everybody know that there are resources in our community that, um, that can be accessed. If you do find that even using these tips that I went over um, is not enough to manage your anxiety or stress level, we do have resources in the community that can help. Um, my agency is one of several agencies that are providing telehealth, which are remote sessions, just like a session that we're doing now, um, that are done typically one-on-one, -on -one, so there's privacy and confidentiality with these sessions. And on my very last slide, I've highlighted three of our community resources um, including Family Preservation, Horizon, and Intercept that offer telemental health. And so we just want to let the community know that, that resources are here should you or your loved one need to, um, to talk with a counselor and to learn some more coping strategies to be able to manage this very difficult time. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll do our intro. As we know, I'm uh, Jack Jones, currently <clears throat> Chief of Fire and Rescue and Emergency Management for Bedford County. So much of what we're doing with this uh, COVID-19 is really uh, the emergency management perspective. And this first slide here, we take a peek at, at three of our folks here, and I know the top says one of these things is not like the other. We look at our friend on the left side of the screen who's touching her face and slouched over next to the gentleman. We look at the gentleman who's not wearing a mask and he's invading uh, personal space of others. And we've got our friend on the extreme right. She's try trying some social distancing. She's wearing a mask. She's not touching others. And you know she's trying to do the best job that she possibly can on her train ride uh, that morning. So that, that's three different examples of, of how people are conducting themselves. And of course, my award goes to the young lady on the right who's doing everything right. When we talk about social distancing, um, currently it, it is working, right? Um, in Bedford County, we have 16 positive cases that we're aware of. They're equally distributed across the county. So the use of masks when appropriate is, is, is really a wonderful thing. And as we try to do when you're in public or around people, wearing a mask is a, is a great concept and it's proven. The hand washing is doing a huge job because we know it is decreasing virus and decreasing the spread of germs. Our surface cleaning, particularly in the workplace, is, is paying great dividends. And I'll share one thing. No one knows your office or your workspace better than you. 
So we may have housekeeping or maintenance that will come in and they'll clean, but they don't know that when you're on the phone, you slide a desk drawer open repeatedly or you tap your uh, hole punch or you tap your stapler or something. So the fact what I try to do is every morning I go in and I wipe my office down very well of the things that I, I'm touching. We did try teleworking. I, I survived one day and, and had to be, be back, back into the office. And then at the end of the day, I Lysol uh, endlessly the facility itself. And, and, and that's just simply taking some standard precautions that I use consistently, which makes them standard. We can go to the next slide. Our social distancing, our six foot distance, it's really an average, right? And it decreases the transmissibility of virus from the droplet, which we know it airborne droplet particles. It also kind of decreases our, our desire to touch people. I, I handshake, the big hug, you know, the, the, the continued, you know, physical presence of others, which, which we enjoy and we appreciate so much. But if we stay six feet away, it gives us that one or two steps reaching towards a person to say, hey, I, I shouldn't do that. And it is awkward, particularly in such a, a social environment that we live in, where we get to see so many people that, that we really appreciate. It, it is difficult, but that six foot distance is very helpful. And it aids really in maintaining that social awareness. I think if we're stepping away from people, it continues to remind us that we're thinking of the, the droplets, we're thinking of the touching. Our masks in, in just so many different forms we've got out there, we've seen some great opportunities with, with people being creative and also being generous. It protects me, more importantly, maybe it protects you as well. It's a two way street. And also the points of entry for our, our eyes, our nose, and our mouth, it decreases that opportunity. And then just individuals that are just routinely shedding viruses, we say that it's just peeling off of them and coming from their person, it decreases those points of entry. We can go to the next slide. Here's a couple of different ones and consider what your task is, right? Healthcare provider, or public safety, the, the button mask, I'm old school, that's what we called it in the lab, the N95 mask. Is, is the device for that that decreases uh, 0.03 microns, which is very, very small. Understand that the diameter of a human hair is about 0.40 to 0.70. So this virus particle, right, is, is very, very small. And then uh, homemade masks are wonderful. We've seen some very beautiful, creative ones, such as the one Wendy was wearing that her mom had made. And then traditional surgical masks that cup over the ears. Uh, they're great for the average person. But, you know, a regular bandana around around someone's face like the old school the train robber kind of thing that is just fine it it's not as effective as the n95 but then again consider what you're doing you're not in an environment where that type of mask is necessary we have a couple of things that people that wear masks routinely are stressed out by you know uh, fogging glasses is one uh, some maybe some stress on the ears or some some abrading or some discomfort so really getting Getting the mask to fit you well is really very important because then you will wear it more often. And, and another thing which we don't really discuss nearly enough is taking the mask off. Is be careful when you take the mask off because as you've inhaled, as you've been out, you're potentially inhaling uh, viral particles and bacteria and germs on the outside of the mask. So when you take it off, you don't want to grab it by the mask and pull it off and then touch that, right? You want to slip it off appropriately and then put it in a paper bag or put it aside. So that's just a, a tip. Go ahead, next slide. Uh, only when necessary should we be using the anti antimicrobial, you know, uh, alcohol-based hand cleaners. Um, flowing water is phenomenal. Soap and water. Do not damage or abrade the skin. Some people are so fierce in their scrubbing and rubbing because they want it off. We don't want to break the skin. The skin is our natural barrier. We're designed by that. You know, we've been created with our skin to be that natural barrier. The other piece is we have resident flora or germs on our skin that, that keep us healthy and keep us safe. So <clears throat> we don't want to be killing all of those. We, we want them to stay. And that's a very important part. But when we don't have access to water, uh, running water, uh, then, you know, use, use those types of things, those alcohol-based antimicrobial kind of things, but, but really make soap and water your friend. That is a phenomenal step to keep us safe. Wash our hands as often as possible. And it doesn't need to be hot water, just water. Water flows and moves any germs or virus off of our bodies. Hand washing, again, wonderful aid in reducing it. 
uh, water and soap, they moved the pathogen just recently. I think on social media, there was a big, uh, someone had a great, uh, great idea about how it doesn't necessarily kill. No, it does not. It, it moves, right? It moves it along so it's no longer on you. And hot water is not necessary. And that 20 second rule, and, and I would encourage people, I think Wendy and I spoke the other day about this. We think we're washing our hands for 20 seconds and it's five, seven, eight. 20 seconds is a good standard. Time yourself once or twice, you know, have a thought run through your mind, have a song. We used to whistle the Andy Griffith music uh, during the HIV AIDS epidemic initially for hand washing, uh, say a prayer or whatever, but that 20 seconds is very benef beneficial to all of us. And it also gives us a moment, you know, um, a moment, as Jennifer said, to just take a breath, just stand there washing your hands. Think before you touch. Touch as little as possible. Certainly avoid your, your face and your mouth and drink a lot of water. And the water piece is very interesting. One, hydration and health is so important. So by staying hydrated, drinking a lot of water, we're really increasing our chance for anything we may have encountered that's gone in through the mouth of the oral pharynx to go down into the stomach. And as we say, you know, you know, grandma knows, she knows where everybody's hands have been. So please wash your hands. But just a couple of few points uh, about the, the return to normalcy, which we're so, so looking forward to, right? The president has, has put out some, some phases last night. It'll be up to the governor to really guide us in our commonwealth, being a Dillon rule state. The state will, will mandate so much of how we will approach this. But this return to normalcy, we may have to wear masks for a while, right? That's kind of a given washing hands, social distancing, but, but the great opportunity for us is to get the economy rolling, get our businesses back, get our people engaged, get our mental health back to a, to a positive point. And what that's going to be is, is probably some changes in the workplace. And I think our, our local businesses and, and our community and our service community are just so wonderful at what they do that their input is going to be so important because I've never run a barbershop or a hairdressing shop. Right. So I should probably reach out to those people to find out what methods and mechanisms will work as far as limiting numbers of people. Should you just do online appointments? How many people can we have in a shop and all of those things? But but our return to normalcy may not be what it was six months ago, but it's going to be strong. It's going to be good. And I think the folks that are speaking today and on all of our chamber outreaches, I think, are so important that that Bedford become the stronger, newest Bedford that it can become. And I'll be on the line and looking forward to taking any questions that you have. Your fire and rescue community, your law enforcement, local government, we're out working, doing the best we can in troubled times, but that um, it gives such an opportunity for us to work outside the box and be collaborative and work together. And I can assure you as the chief of fire and rescue, the senior uniform person, that I will tell you, your fire rescue, law enforcement, communications people in Bedford County work tirelessly and they're, and they're, they're out there every single day fighting the good fight for our community. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it back to Scott. What I was trying to say earlier was that Michael regrets that he couldn't be with us today. Um, he was pulled into a, a work group with the CEO this morning. So he asked me to step in and I could not eliminate his first slide that he's been showing uh, the last couple of weeks. So I wanted to make sure I included that just as a reminder of why we're doing what we're doing uh, when it comes to, to putting the protective measures in place in order to flatten the curve. So the next slide actually shows that it kind of is working. Um, so this is one projection. There are many, I'm sure you guys have probably heard about the, the UVA projection as well. Um, but this is one model from IHME that shows um, how, where, our, our, where they project our peak to be um, and then how long they expect that peak to be. And as you guys can see, that, that's not a, a very short peak. It, it actually lasts a little while. Um, this model was updated April 13th. Um, and it's a, a projection based on you know, bed capacity. And, and of course it shows that According to this, we will be okay on our bed capacity in the state of Virginia. Um, and it also assumes social distancing through the end of May. Um, so that's another point to kind of put in there, but it also does help explain the recent governor's extension um, to May 8th for the, the non-essential businesses. So um, the next slide is just a, another update um, as far as where we are on our cases. This is from the Virginia Department of Health. Um, the, the first numbers were from last week, and then the, um, the bottom numbers are as of yesterday when I pulled this information. Um, you can see how the numbers are changing. 
um, from last week's information, the, the rate of increase is changing a little bit, but of course we are still getting more cases. Uh, the next slide is just, again, kind of a, that, that information numerically for our area. As Chief mentioned, we do have 16 cases in Bedford. Um, and you can also notice kind of the rate of increase changes from, from one location to the other. It's, it's quite varied um, in, in how it's growing across the different counties. And the next slide, um, just some, some updated information from everyone when it comes to COVID-19 testing and antibody testing. That's the latest um, question that everyone has. Um, as of uh, yesterday, we are able to run COVID-19 testing through our hospital at Lynchburg General, um, through our lab at Lynchburg General. Uh, initially, we're that, that's going to start small, but we expect that um, the, the amount of testing we can do to increase in the next few weeks. We are also acquiring the capability to perform the antibody testing. Uh, we expect that to be able to run tests in the next, approximately the next two to three weeks. So that is on the horizon. Um, when it comes to masks, um, I know uh, Chief talked about masks a little bit. Just wanted to mention our mask policy for Centra. Um, so all of our patient facing employees are to wear a surgical mask um, and depending on what interaction they have with a the patient, they wear an N95 or a PAPR mask. Um, all non-patient facing employees are um, asked to wear a cloth mask when they are at work. So we all have our cloth mask if, if we're not um, a patient facing employee while we're on the, a hospital campus. Um, and then all patients and visitors uh, that come into our facilities are given a, a procedure or, or surgical type mask when they come in that they are asked to wear for the, their duration of their, their stay with us um, you know, while, they're, while they're here. We do have some cloth masks that we are giving to, um, that we are giving to patients and visitors if they ask for one when they go out in the community if they don't already have one. So we do have a cloth mask supply for that as well. Um, we we are still working on our, our PPE or personal protective equipment supply. Um, part of the reason for our recent change in our mask procedures, this was just as of late last week, was because we, we currently have an adequate stock of PPE, including our face mask, um, and we expect to be able to continue to have an adequate stock um, from our vendors. But um, we, we've been adapting those policies depending on, on how that can change. And we know that can change um, quite often. So as of right now, we have an adequate supply. And that's part of the reason for, for providing more surgical masks. Um, and, and as long as that stays the same, then, then we'll be able to continue doing that. Um, the other information on this slide, how we can help, how you can help. Uh, we have had requests for people that they want to know what they can do as far as donations, um, different appreciation things for staff. We've, um, we've really enjoyed receiving cards and um, some of our staff received a, a plant from a local um, nursery and, and different things. So we, we really, really enjoyed um, receiving those and, it, and it's helped the staff, uh, again, with some of their mental health and you're just feeling appreciated, knowing that they're feeling appreciated. Um, and then the other part is just staying social. So um, everyone needs to have a little bit of fun. So, um, and it, we encourage you to visit our Facebook page um, and our in Instagram account. We are trying to do things to keep um, our employees um, social and then staying social with our community as well. So I, uh, I offered to do just a little bit of an introduction here to uh, to using Zoom. And as um, Jennifer and, and as Chief Jones mentioned earlier, it's a great tool to use. Millions of people are using it now, both to connect to loved ones and, and family members and also to customers, you know, for a lot of small businesses. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, uh, on the background information, but uh, the founder of Zoom uh, is a very interesting story if you ever want to uh, read about his uh, experiences starting up at uh, WebEx in Cisco. But anyway, today we're gonna just look at a, a brief overview of how to use Zoom as a, uh, 
as a person who has an account because many people have been using it just by clicking and joining just like you did today. So uh, let's go to the next slide. And um, of course, uh, you're all uh, participating in a, a Zoom call right now. Um, the, nice thing, the nice thing is that if you want to set up your own account, Zoom has a free uh, account uh, available, which has a lot of features. And uh, I think you could spend a lot of time just learning about all the features on the free Zoom ac account before you would uh, need to go to a paid account if you're just doing it for personal use or, or for family uh, meetings and so on. Um, fortunately, most people have somebody who's somewhat technically uh, uh, able in their family, but, um, but if you don't, you can become that person. So just go to zoom.us and uh, you, can, you can sign up for a free account. Next slide there, Scott. So um, the nice thing about the free accounts is you can have up to 100 participants. Now, that, that's quite a bit for uh, you know, casual use, but, um, uh, but you're limited to 40 minutes in duration if you have three or more participants. So if it's just you and one other person talking on Zoom uh, with, with a free account having set up the meeting, you can, you can talk as long as you want. Uh, so far, I haven't been kicked off, but um, maybe, they, maybe they have some kind of limit. Um, so the paid accounts are pretty reasonable, $15 a month. And uh, again, you can check out all the features here on, on zoom.us, but that's, that's the place to start. Um, once you have an account, you can set up your meetings from a simple start screen. This is showing the screen that you would normally see on a Windows computer. Um, others are somewhat similar and fairly intuitive. So you can either do a new meeting, you can join a meeting like uh, we did today. Um, you can uh, schedule a meeting, which is nice to do if you want to schedule something for a few days out or later in the same day or whenever. And you can schedule ongoing meetings as well. And uh, then you got the ability to share your screen. So we'll go to the next uh, slide here and see a little bit more about that. Um, there, there's a uh, when you, when you hit the schedule a meeting, you basically set up an instant meeting. You've started a meeting, nobody else is there yet until you give them the web address or the uh, meeting ID and, and password for them to log in. So you could set up a meeting while you're talking to someone on the phone and uh, give them the information over the phone or you could email it to them or text it to them and they, they can click on the link and join you in, in the meeting. Um, this personal meeting room, um, it used to by default not use a password. Well, then we heard a lot about security issues and Zoom bombing and all that. And now Zoom has set it up so that um, the default is that, that it does require a password. Um, you can override that default if you wanted to, but uh, that's always a good idea for security purposes. Um, and then for scheduling a meeting, the nice thing about using Zoom um, as, a, uh, as a host, if you will, a person with a account, whether it's free or paid, is um, you can schedule the meetings and you, it, they can actually uh, integrate with your Outlook or Google Calendar. I think maybe Yahoo Calendar too is an option now, um, but you can schedule a meeting that way. Um, and it, you can, uh, obviously and invite all your participants uh, by sending an email or, or text or, or whatever. I just hearing some lawn mowing going on in the background. Scott, is, is, my, is my audio coming through okay? You're, uh, you're sounding good and the grass looks fantastic. Oh, that's good to hear. Okay, um, one nice thing about Zoom and uh, it may depend upon your computer as well, but there are, there are many audio options. So the first, uh, the first little icon on your control panel, which shows up at the bottom of the screen, and you've seen it yourselves here you, uh, being involved in this uh, webinar today. Anyway, the audio settings uh, have a lot of different features, some of which are like automatic noise canceling and echo canceling and so on. They may help drown out the background noise. Um, 
video on and off. Um, you know, there's a number of settings for that. I would, I would encourage you to play around with your video settings before setting up a meeting. Verify that, you know, you can see yourself fine and your, your image looks okay, your lighting looks okay and all that. Um, and then, uh, of course, security issues. We'll talk about that in another slide. And uh, all, all the other features here. One, one nice feature that you've seen used today is a chat feature. And as a host, you can enable that for everybody to use, or you can enable it just for people to be able to chat to you, the host, um, things like that, number of settings there. And sharing your screen is a great thing to do, um, especially if you're in a, a business meeting, um, you're often sharing screen, or if you're doing a presentation like this today. Uh, but you can also share your screen with your family and friends and just show them pictures that you have on your uh, computer or pictures on your phone because uh, Zoom obviously works on your phone, on a tablet, on a PC. We'll go to the next one here. Um, security issues I mentioned. There's been a lot in the news about this lately. There have been a number of improvements made in the Zoom security features in the last few weeks with all the uh, negative press they're getting. But um, the, the most important thing is to, to always set up your meeting ID with, to use a password. Um, you don't wanna publish your web link in a public platform unless you're doing a major webinar type situation. And um, you generally want to enable the waiting room feature, which I think now is the default, but uh, you'll see that under the security options uh, when you click on that and are using Zoom. So let's go to the next slide. This is uh, uh, interesting information just about presentations in general, video presentations and, and, and uh, whether it's online or whether it's in a live audience. But a lot of, uh, a lot of studies have shown that a, a big part of your communications is the visual impact uh, and the physiology of the speaker. So just be aware of that when you're, when you're communicating online. And, um, and another, you know, like 38% they're saying is, is the tone and how the speaker presents. And maybe only 7% of your impact uh, might be the actual content of your slides. So, I mean, we, we focus on creating slides with bullet points and, and all that, but um, it's also important to practice how you present and, and uh, how you want to come across. Camera position and angle, there's some tips there about, you know, trying to keep your camera at eye level or above. You may want to reposition your laptop um, or your phone um, to, to try to get a, a, an optimal uh, image and view. Uh, backgrounds, uh, my background's a little cluttered here today, but um, you do have the option in Zoom to select a virtual background if you're presenting. and uh, People have fun with that because one of them is like an island scene and it looks like you're uh, out in the Bahamas or something like that. Um, so there's more information about that. You can check on the Zoom site, Zoom help. Uh, and uh, muting is important. Preparation, of course, is key. Checking things out. Um, video, audio, we're all learning every day that uh, gee, there's settings on our PC or on our phone that we don't know about. It's very common to have issues like that. Uh, takes some time to, to get it uh, straight sometimes, but uh, you know, one, one tip might be to uh, just call yourself from another device, you know, set up a Zoom meeting when you're practicing, uh, talk between your laptop and your, and your, um, and your phone or, or have a friend join you. Lots of support on the Zoom site. Just go to their support center or their help center as they call it click on anything and read the topics. They're overwhelmed with um, requests for help now. So you, you may have trouble getting to a live person or, or even doing an online chat. There may be a wait. Scott mentioned that the other day when we were talking, but, um, but there is a lot you can read and there's a lot of good videos too. On the next chart. Um, so the Zoom video tutorials are really good. You check those out, learn from that. And this is another learning experience that Jennifer talked about in her, uh, in her presentation. You might want to learn a new hobby. Well, you might want to learn as much as you can about using Zoom effectively. Next uh, slide. 
So uh, with that, happy Zooming. I'll be around for questions. Fantastic. Craig, thank you so much. Greatly appreciated. And uh, again, thank you for your being available for me earlier this week. I went to the, to the Zoom chat feature to get some support. And like you said, they're just overwhelmed. I was literally number 172 in line for the chat feature. So it was gonna be a little while. I appreciate you hopping on the, uh, on the line and, and helping me out. So with that, thank you to all of our, uh, our panelists. Again, great information today, very, very useful. And uh, with that, I'll turn it back to Wendy to uh, maybe answer any questions that we've had come in today and, uh, and give us maybe a little preview of next week, if appropriate. Absolutely. I thank you so much. Don't we have an excellent panel? I'm so thrilled with the information that you guys present. And thank you again for coming on. Most importantly, thank you for supporting our community every single day. Um, I have a quick question. I didn't see any questions come in. So my question to Christy is how can we help our healthcare workers best right now? I know there's a lot of food going around. People are sending food into for neighbors that are on the front lines and essential workers. But is there anything else that we can do as a community or as business owners or business members, community members, just that, making masks. What do you need? What do the healthcare workers need right now? Well, basically right now it's just showing appreciation because even though um, specifically Bedford Memorial is, um, sorry, hang on. Uh, specifically Bedford Memorial is, is transferring any COVID patients that we receive to Lynchburg General. That doesn't mean that our staff aren't still stressed about um, the possibility of interacting with a COVID positive patient. So um, basically any, any way that you're capable or able to, to show appreciation for them, um, we would certainly enjoy it. Um, there, there's a lot of things happening in Lynchburg and then sometimes the rural places uh, don't, don't quite get as much um, of, of the pot, I guess you'd say. But so that's pretty much the main thing. Um, as as mask uh, guidelines change, uh, the donations of, of, of masks, cloth masks have been changing into um, people have made headbands with buttons on the side so that the ear loops won't hurt the nurse's ears um, and, and different things like that. So, so we're happy to, to receive any creativity <laughs> anyone wants to, to put forth. Um, and it just, it, it doesn't have to be a lot as far as appreciation, just a simple note or a card um, or a phone call, anything that that's a thank you. That's, essentially what they need the most because as we've been talking about mental health that's that's what they're 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 just feeling the stress and the tension of it that's right and and we appreciate you guys every single one of you that are giving of your time your energy your support every single day for the rest of us so thank you christy and all of our healthcare workers every single one of you on the front lines chief chief jack jones craig scott uh, jennifer um, every single one of you, we just thank you so much and definitely encourage our listeners to continue to encourage, however that may be, giving a plant, as Christy said, they got a plant, and, you know, just doing what you can. Um, just that is so wonderful. So we need that. We are together in this and we will be better together. Um, we will survive together. So this, these Connect 40 calls keep us connected. And that is what we're all about, is making sure that you have the tools that you need to uh, survive and get back to thriving again. Um, we are truly in this together. Chambers across the nation are doing our best to ensure that you can transition uh, out of this season stronger and more connected than ever before, whether it's by Zoom or however we connect. But please, I encourage every single one of you stay connected by Zoom and, and other uh, conferences that you can get on. Together, we will keep Bedford in business. And that's what we're about. So uh, we're not going to give up. And small business grant, just a quick reminder, save small business grant fund will come out on the 20th, which is this coming Monday. It's $5,000 to small businesses that um, are having issues with the COVID-19. So you definitely want to go to that website. Um, and then thinking outside the box for your business. Keep thinking outside the box. If you don't change and evolve, that's where you have the problems. That's where you cannot move forward. So to keep moving forward, change and evolve and make some changes within your business plan right now because it is gonna look different for the rest of this year. 
Um, we're looking at fourth quarter being different, but you know, we want to continue to to thrive through this and have the resources that you need. Our next um, panel experts for next week will definitely have Centra back. And we're excited for um, whomever Centra brings. We love every single one of you. So <laughs> come on, come on the call. Let us know what's happening. And also Leah uh, Stegler with Woods Rogers attorney we want uh, to find out more information on how our businesses can um, get some some money and and how we can survive through all of this uh, Ben Bowman and Tim Saunders with Virginia Career Works will be on the call giving us information as well so we're we're gonna have a packed panel next week and we have got continuing uh, panel experts that are bringing it every single week. So we continue to change it up a little bit to make sure that we're bringing you new information that your business needs. So thank you again. Continue to stay connected and we look forward to seeing you virtually next week. Stay healthy.